Chapter 1741, Pure Continent. Buzz. The death seal lit up and raised Li Qi like a lotus flower. He disappeared into the vast expanse. Bang. It eventually broke through the sky vault and made entry into the tenth world. Thump. Li Qi fell into the ground after the seal disappeared. He laughed and patted the dirt and mud off his clothes. He looked up and saw a barren land with no end in sight. It spanned more than 10 million miles. A scorching air assaulted his face as if there were countless volcanoes underground. This place seemed to have been set on fire by an unbelievable flame. While stepping on the pebbles, people would feel as if they were stepping on burning coal. It was truly a test of perseverance. Burning Rampart, pure continent, not a bad place. A home for the hundred races. Li Qi licked his lips and smiled while breathing in the burnt air. This was one of the thirteen continents. It had countless inhabitants from the hundred races. No one knows how vast this place was. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it was the size of any of the nine worlds. It was a prosperous location. Even though it wasn't as highly viewed as arrogance in the mind of the hundred races, it was another safe haven for them along with arrogance before the emperor hunt. Only in these two places were the hundred races treated on the same level as the three races. Thus, arrogance and pure were considered their territories. Arrogance was the first among the thirteen continents where the hundred races gained equality while pure was the second. Before Emperor Hunt, all members of the hundred races were willing to stay at these two continents because they considered them the safest. Of course, this was due to the continuous effort of the wise sages in the past. The greatest contributions came from two immortal emperors, Jiao Hung and Gu Chen. Just the name of arrogance should be indicative of immortal emperor Jiao Hung's majestic accomplishment. Its name was white in the past but the emperor came and defeated nine grand emperors. This battle achievement threatened all the tenth world. His domination lasted for several generations. Eventually, he even challenged flame emperor who possessed twelve heavens wills. The result of this fight was unknown. After Flame Emperor died to a heavenly execution, it became even harder to find out. Nevertheless, Immortal Emperor Jiao Hong changed the name of the continent to Arrogance. Moreover, the citizens from the Hundred Races were no longer under the jurisdiction of the Three Races. Flame Emperor at the time gave implicit agreement. No one from the Three Races objected this change either. Just like that, Arrogance became home for the Three Races. A verse came from his achievement, one palm against three thousand emperors, two fists sweeping through the thirteen continents. This ode echoed the entire realm, giving pride to the humans that were as weak as ants. Pure came much later after arrogance. The biggest contributor was immortal emperor Gu Chen. He was the first emperor of the nine worlds so he ascended much earlier than immortal emperor Jiao Hung. However, he didn't challenge and defeat all the grand emperors like immortal emperor Jiao Hung at first. He lacked amazing battle records but gained a very high position after arriving. He was acknowledged by many grand emperors from the three races. Even the second person with twelve heavens wills, Origin Heaven Emperor, thought very highly of him. He maintained a low profile especially after Origin Heaven Emperor started the second ultimate expedition. He rarely asked about worldly matters and only focused on cultivation. Several more generations later, after the failed expedition of Deep South Divine Emperor and Immortal Emperor Fei, the Quiet Emperor finally appeared. He commenced a meeting with the Grand Emperors, Immortal Monarchs, and Immortal Emperors from all races with the intention of starting the fourth expedition. The result was the three races agreeing to remit pure continent. The hundred races from then on had the same status as the three races in this particular continent. With the negotiation completed, Immortal Emperor Gu Chun and the other embarked on their way. Even though he wasn't as supreme as immortal emperor Jiao Hung who defeated many emperors to establish arrogance, his inconspicuous effort and achievements still won him the respect in all the thirteen continents. The children of the hundred races felt that he was worthy of being the first emperor from the nine worlds. Perhaps people from arrogance would think that immortal emperor Jiao Hung was above him, the citizens from pure considered him to be at the highest position. Burning Rampart was a desolate desert in pure. Despite spanning for millions of miles, it was tiny compared to pure as a whole. Immortal emperors from the nine worlds could sense a unique aura here beyond the scorching temperature, one that couldn't really be detected in the nine worlds. It was the aura of chaos containing primordial power from the origin. This was the main difference between the nine worlds and the tenth. Cultivators from the nine worlds absorbed worldly energy to control the Grand Dao. Meanwhile, 
Cultivators from the 10th were even more direct. They absorbed chaos energy in order to control primordial power. Even though the worldly energy in the nine worlds could be refined into chaos and primordial power, it was much more difficult to do so if one wasn't an immortal emperor. When an emperor reached the nine worlds and wanted to grow, they would also refine their worldly energy and deo power into the next level. Li Qi smiled while sensing the aura that wasn't as readily available in the nine worlds. He began his tread after determining a direction. He was quite slow just like a mortal. In fact, he was indeed a feeble mortal right now. The withering ray from World Emperor's group was too powerful. It destroyed everything from Li Qi, including his Deo Foundation. Only the 13 palaces and 4 inner physiques were left behind. Alas, they were dimmed and devoid of power. It wasn't strange for him to be reduced to this level. Think about it, how many people would be able to survive an attack from World Emperor and 12 more Grand Emperors? His rebirth was already a miracle. Without his 13 palaces, he would never be able to cultivate again since this type of injury would haunt him forever. The 13 palaces have escaped all shackles. They protected his inner physiques and these two entities removed the injuries from the withering ray. With his Deo foundation destroyed, all of his previous cultivation was gone with the wind. However, he considered this to be an acceptable result. He didn't become depressed at all. It wasn't a big deal to him. All of this could be rebuilt again without difficulty. He had already achieved his goal for the ambush. At the very least, he was able to steal six wills to light up his second law. More importantly, World Emperor escaped because of the Heavenly Tribulation. These emperors from the three races shouldn't bother him for a while. At the same time, the threat of the ancient Ming ascending should be pressuring them as well. The question was whether to focus on destroying the Dark Crow, their lifelong enemy, or the ancient Ming shrouded in darkness first. They required time to deliberate regardless of the final decision. Thus, the next period of time was peaceful for Li Qi after taking the first successful step in the Tenth World. Chapter 1742, Burning Rampart Burning Rampart has been incinerated into a land of death with no sign of life here to speak of. Many inhabitants in Pure believed that this place had been burned by a heavenly flame. The stones and rocks have melted. Some places even had signs of porcelainization, this was the proof of the unbelievably high temperature that was present in the past. 1. Only a heavenly inferno would reach this raging level, hence the prediction. Cultivators didn't have any trouble navigating through burning rampart. They were free to travel using the sky or the earth and capable of withstanding extreme temperatures. This was not the case for mortals. They would either die from thirst or starvation from being lost or just go crazy from the blazing heat here. At this particular juncture, Li Qi was even weaker than a mortal scholar. Nevertheless, he still strolled through the scorching ground with such ease. This insanity-inducing heat cracked his lips and with smoke coming out of his mouth yet it didn't affect him. He had experienced pain a thousand times worse than this. This level of pain was as light as the wind to him and completely trivial. This wasn't his first time here either so he continued on after picking a direction. He was in no hurry to leave this place or pure for that matter. At the same time, he wasn't worried for Ming Yaxu and the others. There was no point because the Golden Dragon and Tyrant Tiger were paving the way for them. Outside of 12 Will Emperors, even two Grand Emperors at 10 Wills wouldn't be able to kill them together. Moreover, the coordinates of the ship were very well known. Even if three Grand Emperors were to attack them, certain Emperors from the Nine Worlds would come to help right away. There were people along the way during his journey. Of course, they weren't residents, only cultivators. After reaching a particular area, cultivators would show up. They were here to look for ore mines or deo materials. Others were here to try and polish their deo comprehension. The majority of them were flying in the sky or riding their treasures and weapons. Of course, a few were dashing through the sand as well. However, there wasn't a mortal likely key walking through this place. This attracted the cultivator's attention. In their eyes, a mortal was simply an ant. Thus, Li Qi was not worth a second glance. They quickly got on with their business. Of course, one or two kind ones would occasionally stop and asked, Hey, mortal, are you lost here? Do you want me to lend you a hand? Thank you, I am here to improve myself, just let me be. Li Qi smiled and answered them, Be careful, don't die here. Burning Rampart isn't a place for mortals. The kind cultivator shook their head and left without forcing the issue. Li Qi ignored others' stare and continued on his way. 
If cultivators were thinking about training at Burning Rampart, there was one place where they must go, the Sky Pit. This was a very strange area to the west of the Rampart. There were many large pits here, not just one. These pits had varying temperatures, unlike the Rampart. Some were as cold as an ice storage. Others were hot enough to boil the unlucky ones that fell down. Some had springs running through it just like an oasis. The most magical aspect of this place was the numerous mysterious marks. The pits came in all shape and form with varying depth. The only similarity was the many marks within. One mark was only in the form of a long crease along the wall, a resulting mark of being burned. Another one consisted of many random runes, some of which were very occult. These seals weren't carved or branded. They seemed to form in a natural manner. No one knew how they came to be. Some believed that a supreme existence has left them behind. Perhaps these were also the remnant marks after a heavenly execution. Another common belief was that the high heaven sent them down as enlightenment marks. Later generations were very interested in these markings. The thing that interested them the most was the visit from many immortal monarchs and grand grand emperors. Even the top ones such as Flame Emperor, Origin Heaven Emperor, and Deep South Divine Emperor came to take a look. Rumor has it that even Pure Wood Divine Emperor was here as well. Of course, this particular visit couldn't be verified due to the mysterious nature of this particular emperor. He was the first to obtain 12 Heaven's Wills and was considered the longest living Grand Emperor. People only knew that they came to visit the place before, not their purpose. However, Deo comprehension was the most popular theory. Because of this, people always visited the place to follow in the footsteps of the emperors. They all desired to learn something from the mysterious marks here. Perhaps one day, they could even become an amazing emperor or monarch. However, a pitiful amount managed to ever learn something. The majority left empty-handed. Burning Rampart might be a desolate area but the Sky Pit was always lively. There were always several hundred or even more than 1,000 cultivators present. The lowest number was around several dozens. At this time, a fair number of people were meditating here. Some hovered above in order to feel the power of primordial chaos. Others were pondering about how to understand the profundity of these marks. One flew above to get a panoramic view over the entire Sky Pit. Because Pure was one of the largest lands for the hundred races, many humans, golems, and charming spirits were here. Of course, cultivators from the three races were present as well. When Li Qi got here, the person looking down at the entire pit had a scepter symbol on his forehead. This youth came from the heaven race and the scepter was their unique symbol. Not all members of this race would have this scepter marking. Mortals didn't. Only after reaching a particular cultivation level or a certain thickness in their bloodline would this scepter appear. Also, some of the noblest members would have the scepter at birth. Li Qi saw marks everywhere in these pits. He looked at the sky vault, wishing to pierce through its deepest location. His gaze was able to surpass everything. Damned heaven, he licked his parched lips and murmured. He found a pit and directly got inside to stare at the sky. He didn't bat an eye as if there was something beautiful up there. This continued on for several days with him lying motionlessly. Some cultivators thought he was dead until they saw that his eyes are still open. Hey, don't play dead here, mortal. You're in people's way. An expert reprimanded Li Qi. Chapter 1743, Mortal Reversion Art. Li Qi has been staying at Sky Pit for several dozen days. He would only lie there to look at the sky in a daze without moving at all. Occasionally, he would do so next to a marking as if wanting to imprint the mark on his body. At other times, he would sit in the meditative pose as if he was cultivating. The truth was that for ordinary cultivators, this place was no secret. There were no hidden treasuries, occult cultivation, and it wasn't even a good place for training. This place was useless unless people were at the same level as Origin or Deep South. However, these two emperors didn't come here for Deo comprehension. They only wanted to read the future and the wish of the heavens. Of course, Li Qi was aware of the secret hidden here. One that only he knew of and it was useful to him only. The nine worlds had many interlinked and disconnected aspects with the tenth. For cultivation, worldly energy could be refined into chaos energy and Grand Deo power could be polished into primordial energy. However, the latter was much purer. Even though one could still use the cultivation method from the nine worlds here, the speed could be as slow as a snail's pace. Without a doubt, people would think that they're too dumb for cultivation. Because of this, 
immortal emperors would make minor changes to their cultivation despite wielding the immense heaven's will. There were two paths for them to take. The first was to strengthen their heaven's will. The second was to take in the wills from the tenth world. As for the hundred races in the tenth world, they couldn't cultivate these imperial arts so they had their own. Some arts were stolen from the three races or at least derived from them. Of course, some wise sages spent generations to create new merit laws. One immortal emperor must be mentioned on this topic, immortal emperor Wangu. He was the first emperor from the ghost race so he ascended to the tenth world very early. His achievements were not on the same level as immortal emperor Jiao Hong and immortal emperor Gu Chun since he didn't win any territory for the hundred races nor fought against the grand emperors. He spent his time cultivating like a hermit searching for the grand Dao. With that, he was able to create a path for immortal emperors to fuse the two types of heaven's wills. This was a matchless achievement for cultivation. He also spent his time creating suitable merit laws for the hundred races. Ultimately, few surpassed him in terms of contribution towards cultivation. In the 13 continents, many mortals from the hundred races would normally start with the best and most common entry cultivation method, the myriad law art. 1. This method was created by immortal emperor Wangu. It was suitable for humans, ghosts, charming spirits, and many others. It was one of the most widespread merit laws. Many vagabonds and new cultivators couldn't join the big powers to train with the best merit laws or imperial arts. Because of this, they could only pick the most common and suitable merit law, which was usually the myriad law art. If myriad law was the most suitable for all races, then the mortal reversion art was the best for humans. This was the second law of the three most popular ones. Of course, other races could also cultivate with the mortal reversion art but humans had the best result. It had countless copies. Each of them was different because later generations would make adjustments, for personal use or future use. Despite its popularity, no one knew who created this particular method. It came out of nowhere in an ancient era. Some people believed that it came from immortal emperor Jiao Hung or other wise sages of the human race. The truth was that its creator was the Dark Crow. After coming to the tenth world, he pondered about a cultivation method up here. He didn't only create it for the humans but he took it to a higher level, culminating in an art to punish the heaven. Later on, with increased proliferation and more additions, very few people could use mortal reversion and turn it into the heaven punishing art. Li Qi chose mortal reversion as his entry method this time around. He didn't pick something from the nine worlds because they weren't suitable in the upper realm. Even though his memories regarding mortal reversion have been erased, he created it back then inside these pits. Thus, he returned to this old place in order to look at the markings. Memories of the art surfaced again. He had his reasons for doing so. Though there were many editions of mortal reversion around in any street side shops, he needed the purest of them all, not the ones that have been altered. Moreover, the heaven punishing art that came after was best learned in this place. These pits contained secrets about an ancient expedition not known by others. As he continued his research, a few cultivators glanced at him with derision. Cultivators who cared about their face wouldn't attack a mortal. Otherwise, someone would have thrown a human beggar like him away already. After seeing his actions, the cultivators thought that he was insane. Many geniuses came without finding anything but a mortal like him wanted to learn the Dao here? That's the behavior of a lunatic. Of course, some people paid attention to him too. There was a skinny old man with a goatee and two youths behind him, one boy and one girl. The boy was dashing while the girl was enchantingly pretty, a rare beauty she was. They were the old man's disciples and stood behind him while watching Li Qi. The old man was very interested and had been following Li Qi for the last 10 days. He noticed Li Qi was studying the marks. The boy asked, Master, what's so special about this mortal? There are many masters in this world, hidden dragons and crouching tigers everywhere. Our steel pillar gate is only a tiny sect lacking the insight to recognize real experts. Thus, we need to be meticulous and observant. Maybe we'll even gain something from it. The old man explained. Master, your teaching makes sense, we should carefully observe other cultivators but this man is only a human mortal. He is just having some strange ideas coming to the sky pit for Deo comprehension, even the geniuses from the three races can't get anything from this place, is he daydreaming? The beautiful girl felt that Li Qi wasn't worth their time since they came here to train. They couldn't be blamed for thinking like this. Li Qi's cultivation has been destroyed so everyone else saw him as a mortal. 
You can't put it like that. The old man shook his head, such strange ideas are why we have immortal monarchs. In the beginning, humans didn't cultivate either but the wise sages had dreams and strange thoughts, heralding our prosperity in the present, creating the myriad sects and merit laws for our human race. Sometimes, these strange ideas are essential for pioneering achievements. Chapter 1744, T. Shawang. The two young ones didn't quite agree with their master. In their eyes, how could a mortal beggar create any merit law? His observation and every action naturally didn't escape Li Qi's eyes but he didn't really care and acted as if they didn't exist. Eventually, one day when he was sitting above a pit resembling a lake, the old man finally took his two disciples over. My name is Ti Shi Wang, current sect master of Sago Palm. Meeting fellow deist here can be considered a stroke of fate. May I have your name? The old man cupped his fist and asked. His attitude was quite rare. This was a sect master yet he was quite respectful towards a mortal. Even an ordinary cultivator wouldn't care for Li Qi, especially in his current sorry state. Li Qi was bored to death while looking at the shimmering lake and ignored the old man. His arrogant attitude irked the two disciples. The male shouted, Hey, are you deaf? My master is talking to you. Even though Sago Palm was a tiny sect, their master was still an expert and a sect master. This beggar should consider that it was an honor to be treated in this manner by their master. Chenar, do not be disrespectful. Wang shouted before cupping his fist towards Li Qi again, Fellow deist, please excuse me for not teaching my disciple well enough. Li Qi remained fixated on the lake to the two young one's chagrin. If it wasn't for their master's presence, they would have taught this mortal a lesson already. After a long time, Li Qi slowly turned around to look at Wang and said, Behind courtesy is a hidden motive. You wish to ask me for something. How presumptuous. The male disciple named He Chen's expression turned for the worst as he shouted. Be quiet. Wang reprimanded him. The female disciple, Shen Xiaoshan, was also unhappy. She spoke softly, Master, why are you tolerating his disrespectful attitude? Only a mortal, what can he do? Back off. He shouted again before coming forward and deeply bowed towards Li Qi, My disciples are shallow and can't recognize greatness. Please forgive me. Li Qi glanced at him and said, Out of consideration for your cordiality, you may sit. He patted on the muddy ground next to him. There was nothing there, only dirty soil but Wang didn't mind at all. He lifted up his robe and sat down. Li Qi smiled at the respectful old man and said, I am only a mortal, why do you think I'm a master? Burning Rampart is a dangerous place just like a boiling stove, how could a mortal go here? The fact that you are a mortal shows just how amazing it is. Even though your clothes are messy, you are still calm, showing your exceptional heart. Thus, even if you are a mortal, you are someone special. Li Qi was amused by the response, weak your cultivation might be, not your vision though. Many experts lack this insight of yours. Shen Xiaoshan and He Chen didn't like his reply at all and scowled. Their master might not be anyone impure but he was still a Dao monarch. But now, a mortal called him weak? This person didn't watch his mouth at all and have eyes yet can't see Mount Tai. Thank you, Wang replied, I'm just a bit more meticulous and careful than others. You either want an answer or have a favor to ask of me. Li Qi told the polite old man. Sir, you are indeed a master, a dragon hidden among men. It is my pleasure to meet you. The old man was startled. Meanwhile, his disciple felt that his master was only being played by this mortal. A bit interesting. I'm curious about why you think I can answer your questions. Li Qi chuckled. Wang busily answered, Sir, my late teacher taught me that the eyes are the windows to the mind. It can directly reflect a cultivator's Dao heart. In this place with eternal mysteries, anyone who looks at these marks would have a muddled gaze. However, your eyes are clear, unlike the others. Even emperors can't understand everything here yet you are unperturbed. It shows that your mind must be amazing, able to see through the sun shrouded by the clouds or all the real merit laws behind the chaos. Li Qi nodded approvingly, good. Your innate talents are bad but you understand the ways of life. Your master must have been a terrific person too, to teach you something like that. Sir, you are too kind. Wang cupped his fist. The two disciples thought to themselves, what was this about a clear pair of eyes? Maybe this mortal was born stupid and couldn't react to any of the markings. Li Qi stared back at the lake before speaking, It's fine if you want to beseech me but that depends on my mood. If I feel like it, I can teach you a thing or two. Sir, 
If you can answer my questions, Sago Palm will surely thank you, Wang hastily added. Stop. Li Qi interrupted him and waved his sleeve, your rewards are meaningless to me, such a transaction only debases our interaction. You are right, but if you do need anything, just say the words. Wang replied. The two disciples still couldn't handle the mortal posturing like a guru. They couldn't watch their master acting so subservient towards him either and wondered if their master had been struck by a spell or something. Li Qi said, very well, I shall grant you a chance. Speak. The two felt like vomiting blood. This mortal was actually speaking to their master like this? Wang looked around before quietly said, this isn't the place to talk. Sir, will you come to our humble abode? Fine. I don't have any business anyway. Li Qi nodded. He didn't mind going to Sago Palm since he had gotten the mortal reversion art right now. It was time to leave Burning Rampart. Sir, this way? Wang stood up and gestured. I'm tired from a long journey. Get me a carriage. Li Qi told the old man. Wang took out a treasure carriage instantly, one that was pulled by four divine colts. The two disciples didn't dare to comment even though they were annoyed at their master submitting to the guy's every whim. Li Qi pointed at Shen Xiaoshan and casually said, she'll be my driver. You. Her face turned red after hearing this. Even though Sago Palm was a tiny sect, she was still its first disciple, a princess of sorts with so many people fawning over her. She quivered with rage after hearing this demand. Brat, you're pushing it, don't win an inch and want a foot. Her junior brother shouted in defense. Stop. Tisha Wang shouted again at He Chen. The boy could only grit his teeth and kept his mouth shut. Li Qi ignored him and glanced at the girl, it is your honor to be my driver. Having said that, he got into the carriage and immediately went to sleep. This treatment made her livid. She had to restrain the urge of beating this mortal up. Shanner, do a good job. Wang reminded his disciple. Master, she felt wronged and wanted to plead. Her master has always doted on her but he still made her the driver now? Wang reiterated in an urgent manner. This relates to our sex rise and fall. Do a good job of serving him. If anyone dares to be disrespectful, I will expel them. His expression and words were quite solemn and serious. Xiao Shan rarely saw this side of her master so she swallowed all of unhappiness and indignation. However, she channeled this anger towards Li Qi instead and held nothing but contempt for him. Chapter 1745, Sago Palm Gate Shen Xiao Shan was quite angry. A first disciple like her had to be the driver for a mortal? Even though she wasn't a princess, she was certainly treated like one back in her sect but now, this guy was treating her like a servant. She wanted nothing more than to brutally beat the guy down but she didn't dare to disobey her master's order, especially after seeing his serious demeanor. Ti Shi Wang was much more respectful than his two disciples. In his eyes, a mortal like Li Qi could make his sect prosper. Thus, he had high hope for the guy. Even though he wouldn't dare to say that under his control, the gate would grow much larger. He just wanted to gather enough resources and capital for the next generation. This mortal could be the bridge allowing them to cross the Dragon Gate. The sect was located in the western frontier. Its scale was quite negligible, only a few thousand disciples. The strongest was Tisha Wang at Dao Monarch. He was also quite famous in the province. Not to mention all 13 continents. A Deo monarch was nothing impure. In an imperial lineage, Deo monarchs were only common disciples. This western frontier belonged to the Jilin imperial clan. There were countless weak sects like Sago Palm. It didn't even qualify to become a tributary to the clan. It had to rely on a country under the clan's jurisdiction, Western Bank. At the same time, there were more than 300 countries like Western Bank below the clan. Thus, one could imagine just how tiny Sago Palm was in the grand scheme of things as well as the immense size of Jilin. The carriage had great speed and took less than a day to arrive at Sago Palm. Ti Shi Wang respectfully invited Li Qi into his sect and arranged a small quarter meant for honored guests. The entire sect was very confused. Why was their master so respectful towards this human beggar? Some even wanted to ask their first sister but she was in a foul mood and had no desire to waste words. After entering the main chamber, Li Qi sat down and told Wang, take out the things you need help with. Wang was surprised and said, well, sir, you must be tired from the trip. You should rest and we can talk about it, no rush right now. Li Qi narrowed his eyes and said, what? You don't think I'm capable of helping now? Ah, uh, no, no, of course not. 
Wang hurriedly appeased, that wasn't my intention. I was just thinking that you need some rest right now. No need, take it out. Unless it is something difficult, it won't take long. Don't waste my time. Li Qi waved his sleeve. Wang didn't say anything after seeing the guy's insistence and immediately left. After a while, he came back with a tiny box. It was tightly locked with a tiny seal. His expression was very prudent and serious. One could tell that the item inside was definitely extraordinary. He unlocked it and removed the seal before taking out a scroll. He carefully placed it in front of Li Qi before rolling it open and said, Sir, there are many confusing and old writings in this scroll. Please take a look and decipher it. There were strange symbols inside with no particular order. People simply couldn't understand it at all. Upon close inspection, one would find similarities between the ones here and the marks found at the sky pit. Both of them were still as perplexing as ever. Li Qi's eyes became austere after seeing the symbols. He raised his head and asked Wang, where did you get this thing? Wang was shocked to see this gaze even though Li Qi was a feeble mortal. He felt his legs giving in, this feeling completely shocked him. A Deo monarch like him was frightened by a mortal. Well, he smiled wryly and didn't answer. This isn't something you or a sect like Sago Palm can have. Li Qi's voice turned cold. Under Li Qi's austere glare, Wang succumbed to fear, Sir, the truth is that the item doesn't belong to us. A good friend of mine from Western Bank copied the symbols. A country like Western Bank isn't qualified to possess an item like this either. Li Qi uttered. Sir, how do you know? Wang said in a daze. Li Qi flatly responded, Why did you find me? Very simple, it is because you saw me pondering the marks at the sky pit, the reason for top emperors like Deep South to visit the place. The marks there are beyond your sect and Western Bank's comprehension. Thus, even this copy can't be from Western Bank. Wang was astounded. This proved that Li Qi was knowledgeable enough. Even if he wasn't a cultivator, just his knowledge and wisdom alone would make him a supreme mortal. You put us cultivators to shame. We're mere frogs under the well compared to your broad knowledge. Wang bowed, completely convinced by Li Qi. He finally waved his sleeve so that He Chen and Shen Xiaoshan would leave. Even his direct disciples couldn't listen to this matter. After they left, he was still hesitant. Li Qi continued, If you don't tell me, I won't be able to help you. In my opinion, this will be the only chance for your sect to soar. Wang eventually clenched his teeth and made up his mind. He quietly said, Please don't tell outsiders, sir. The symbols from this scroll are from the Jilin Imperial Clan. Every once in a while, the clan would have an exam for scholarly cultivators or even mortals that can read astronomy within their border. The exams are always secretive, these symbols were leaked by someone. He was very careful about this topic because if news of this were to spread, it could bring a sect-destroying disaster to Sago Palm. Nevertheless, he still wanted to gamble with Li Qi. After hearing this, Li Qi stood up with a sour expression. He stared at the horizon through the window without speaking for a long while. Tisha Wang was a bit horrified at this moment. This mortal emitted a soul-stealing prestige. No one would dare to offend him. Li Qi eventually returned to his spot and his expression eased up. He looked at the old man and asked, which immortal monarch from the Jilin clan participated in the sixth ultimate expedition? You don't know, sir. Wang was surprised. Of course I know, I'm just asking to chat. Li Qi calmly responded. Wang scratched his head and said, Rumor has it that Nightfall Immortal Monarch was the one. I only heard it and didn't dare to inquire further, being an insignificant character that I am. There were many stories relating to the Sixth Expedition at the Thirteen Continents. However, only Grand Emperors and Immortal Monarchs were privy to the details. Others only had access to unverifiable rumors. This was doubly true for a tiny sect like Sago Palm. A weak character like Wang didn't dare to pry about this matter. He only heard experts from the bigger sects talking about it. Nightfall Immortal Monarch's involvement was only a rumor as well. No one dared to ask the clan about it. Nightfall Immortal Monarch. Li Qi became quiet after hearing the name. An Immortal Monarch was the title of Heaven's Will Holder from the hundred races, such as humans, golems, charming spirits. This was a way to differentiate Immortal Emperors from the Nine Worlds versus the ones from the Tenth World. Chapter 1746, Tisha Wang's Plan Nightfall was the third and strongest immortal monarch of the Jilin Imperial Clan. She had eleven fate palaces that contained eleven heaven's wills. 
She was only one step from being a top emperor. Her existence allowed the clan to prosper again, especially during her era? When did the Jilin clan start these examinations? Li Qi asked Tisha Wang. The old man pondered and eventually answered with a forced smile, I'm afraid I don't know. It has been going on ever since I knew what's what, so at least this generation on a small scale. I heard that in the past, it was an internal thing. Later on, they also wanted to recruit intelligent and talented disciples so they opened it to outsiders too. After hearing this, Li Qi chuckled and told the guy, you want me to join your sect and take the examination? Ah, uh, I do recommend you because the Jilin clan loves talents. Any sect within their jurisdiction can recommend examines. Of course, I would want nothing more than for you to join our sect too. The old man rubbed his palms awkwardly and said, I know what you want. Those who can pass the examination will be held in high regards by the clan. If you recommended me to take the test or if I were to join your sect, after I become a disciple in that clan and are groomed by them, your sect can build a connection from there. After all, I'll put in good words for you and this will boost your clan's status. Perhaps you will no longer need to be a tributary to West Bank and can be directly under Jilin instead. Wang felt his face becoming hot after Li Qi blurted everything. Back at the sky pit, he could see that this mortal was very knowledgeable regarding astronomy. Further conversations confirmed that the guy was a true scholar. Despite being a mortal, he was more than scholarly enough to perhaps join the Jilin clan. This was Wang's plan. Sir, you are an erudite scholar. With your talents, after becoming a cultivator, you will surely show off your true skill. Even if you can't become an overlord, you will most likely become a strategist for a clan. Thus, staying in the mortal realm is a waste of your knowledge and potential. If you can join the Jilin clan, you'll soar to the sky. With the resources of the clan at your disposal, you'll broaden your horizon and learn even more things. Why wouldn't anyone take such a good path? Wang flattered and told Li Qi about the positive aspects. In fact, anyone who knew the clan would think that a mortal being able to join it was the same as a carp jumping over the dragon gate. No mortal with this knowledge would refuse the offer. It was an opportunity granted by the heavens. Instead of feeling excitement and anticipation, Li Qi simply gave a quick glance at the old man before gazing out the window again. After a while, he said, I can go to the clan for the examination. Really? The old man became ecstatic and immediately bowed, Sir, you are an amazing talent, I'm sure you will be recognized and groomed by the Jilin clan. This was the best case scenario for him. If his recommendation could get someone into the clan, there would be an established line of communication. This, in turn, would raise Sago Pum's status. Don't get excited so quickly, Li Qi leisurely said, it's not that fun being attached to a behemoth like that. Just a little turn of its body can annihilate your section. 1. Yes, of course. Wang laughed happily. He naturally understood this logic. Danger accompanied potential in this case. Of course, he was also aware that risk was necessary for any type of harvest. If they didn't dare to take this amount of risk, there would be no hope for Sago Palm. Your talents are non-existent but your eyes are bright and perceptive. What a shame that you came from a tiny sect like this. If you were from a great power, you could still achieve something great. Li Qi said slowly. The old man smiled wryly and said, I'm already very satisfied to be here at Sago Palm. In my eyes, nothing can be better than this place. He was a broad-minded person, capable of reading people and situations. Alas, his background betrayed him. Even being the sect master of this tiny sect wouldn't grant him anything. There were no resources and backings. As the adage goes, a clever wife still can't make a meal without rice. Thus, Wang couldn't expand and strengthen the sect. At the same time, his talents were average and limited his cultivation. This was another factor contributing to his sex stagnation. Your plan is not bad, not only wishing to establish a relationship with the Jilin clan but also doing everything to groom your two disciples so that they can expand the sect. Unfortunately, their talents are much greater than yours but they lack visions and magnanimity. They might not become anything worthwhile in the future. Li Qi casually commented. Ah, uh, my disciples are arrogant due to their ignorance, they will need your guidance in the future. I hope you will be able to polish them a bit. Wang bowed again. He was aware that he had no hope in his lifetime. He was quite old and could return to the earth at any moment because there was no surpassing the Dao monarch level for him. However, this wasn't the case for He Chen and Shen Xiaoshan. They were much more gifted than their master, 
especially Xiaoshan. He had high hopes for her since she was the best in the sect. They were the focus of his plan and allowed him to see a sliver of hope. In his mind, if Li Qi could join the clan while he could groom his two disciples into exceptional people, his sect would take one step at a time towards something higher. You have also thought about marrying your disciples into the Jilin clan. Li Qi made another speculation. Huh. Wang's expression changed as he faltered backward because Li Qi clearly saw through his mind and revealed thoughts that he had never told anyone before. This was indeed the truth. A direct disciple from Jilin might not want to marry Shen Xiaoshan but a member of a side branch might. His disciple was both talented and beautiful. If this were to happen, his disciple would soar and transform into a phoenix overnight. This would be a fundamental shift in fate for their sect. A while ago, he also had another plan in mind. If Li Qi could actually join Ji Lin, he would marry his disciple to Li Qi. This would bolster the relationship between Li Qi and the sect, a very beneficial development for his sect's future. Nothing can hide from you. Wang smiled, if Shanner could marry into the clan, it would be a monumental change in her life. I wonder if she is fortunate enough. Wang didn't hide it at all. In fact, he hoped that Li Qi and Shen Xiaoshan could become closer. Despite being immortal, Li Qi's knowledge and capabilities would allow him to rise later on. A marriage alliance is an old and never-changing method. No other pact in this world is as secure. Li Qi smiled and didn't judge the old man. Wang's face turned red. His method was a bit embarrassing but he would still do it. He simply replied, Sir, right you are. Even if we don't have any ambition to become strong, we still want something for self-preservation. My sect is only an ant, any great power can easily crush us. He sighed before continuing, my late master wanted to see our sect grow stronger, not stay as an unknown sect that could be destroyed at any moment and no one would bat an eye. Alas, I'm too useless and can only work hard so that the next generation can have some connection with the Jilin clan. Chapter 1747, Shen Xiaoshan. Tisha Wang spoke from the heart. Not to mention all of pure, even in the West Bank alone. They were only a tiny sect painfully struggling at the lowest level. The young ones couldn't sense this struggle. He Chen and Shen Xiaoshan have been trained by Wang since they were young. Wang had even more hopes for Xiaoshan so that's why she became a bit arrogant after being doted on for so long as the princess of the sect. Contrary to their sense of superiority, Wang was experienced enough and had seen the strength of the great powers before. He knew that their sect must obtain some connection with the Jilin clan. Otherwise, if someone were to destroy them in the future, no one might even hear about it. For example, West Bank country, it would only need to send a random elder to flatten their sect. This was the reason why Wang was always anxious about the future. It rather became a tributary to Jilin than West Bank. It wasn't only because Jilin was more powerful. More importantly, it was much farther away from their own sect. Due to the distance, Jilin wouldn't interfere or supervise with a tiny sect like Sago Palm. This wasn't the case for West Bank because of the close proximity. Thus, being connected with Jilin would give Sago Palm another layer of assurance. The path is difficult, not just for cultivators and training. Sects have a difficult time too. Li Qi told the old man. This type of things happened too often in both the Nine and Tenth worlds. The old man forced a smile and asked awkwardly while pointing at the scroll, Sir, can you solve these symbols? Oh, you don't trust me. Li Qi responded. The old man quickly waved his hands back and forth in denial, No, no, that's not what I meant. I know that you are full of wisdom. It's just that. I'm sure you are aware, these examinations have their standards and the candidates are carefully chosen. I do have some connections that can let you come to the Jilin clan to show your skill. However, I still need something more tangible to convince them. Otherwise, no one will believe me. All of you are blind men touching an elephant. How can you know the answer? Not to mention you and your connection, even the Jilin clan doesn't know what they are looking at. It's all just speculations and not even learning anything on the surface level. Li Qi smiled and shook his head. He continued on while looking at the old man, you might have gotten this thing but definitely not the answer. Even if I explain the symbols to you, you still won't be able to see their profundity. In fact, these symbols detailed things that were too profound. Even the ancestors from the Jilin clan wouldn't be able to understand them, only possessing a superficial knowledge at best. Only characters at the imperial level were capable of true comprehension. Sir, 
I might not understand it but I do have an assessing standard with me, I'm sure it won't let you down, the old man hurriedly said. Li Qi smiled in response, very well, I'll entertain you then. With that, he wrote down text in such a smooth manner. The content was profound with esoteric Dao laws beyond Wang's comprehension. Of course, Li Qi agreed to take the exam wasn't because of Wang or Sago Palm. He simply felt very interested in the items at the Jilin clan. They, themselves, weren't aware of what they had. This was the reason why they started these examinations, hoping someone could understand these symbols. Wang took a look after Li Qi was finished. He naturally didn't understand them. The text looked heavenly like stallions soaring across the sky. He became dazed with a headache. Nevertheless, he still carefully folded the paper and put it away. In his eyes, this text shouldered the fate of his sect. They depended on it to climb up the ladder towards the Jilin clan. Of course, Li Qi really didn't care about these things. No one could stop him from getting what he wants. He stared at the horizon in quiet contemplation with a heavy heart. The ultimate expedition was an immensely difficult topic. Despite not personally seeing immortal Emperor Qi Zhen's sixth expedition, he already knew the result. His heart, time-beaten and numb, was still affected. Ti Shi Wang didn't dare to disturb him and quietly waited to the side. After a while, Li Qi regained his wits and glanced at the old man, I'm a bit tired, time for a bath. I'll have someone prepare one for you, Wang hastily replied. Let your female disciple waits on me, Li Qi casually ordered. Ah. Uh, Wang was taken aback by the request. Even though he had such thoughts, especially if Li Qi were to join the Jilin clan, it would be too early right now. Don't worry, I don't care for her beauty or anything. Let her serve me with a back rub. Li Qi answered after noticing the old man's expression. I shall do so. Wang shuddered after seeing Li Qi's cold eyes again. He believed that the guy wasn't in it for anything sexual. What? Shen Xiaoshan shouted after hearing her master, Master, you you want me to go serve him? Yes. Wang said slowly, do your best without any mistake. This is a heavy responsibility for your sake and the sects. Master, this is too much. He Chen loudly joined in. His senior sister was the prettiest at Sago Palm. So many brothers had a crush on her. Now, she had to go serve a mortal beggar? He Chen didn't know what spell had stricken his master. Watch it. Wang reprimanded, what do you know? Even if he is only a mortal, his vision and mind are superior, an extraordinary mortal he is. When dealing with others, do not judge by appearance or you'll pay for it one day. He rarely yelled at his disciples in such a stern manner in the past. It was certainly working because the two became afraid. But, master, well, it's too irrational to let sister go serve him. He Chen lowered his tone. Wang said, who can predict the future? Go, don't be so willful. You are responsible for Sago Palm as well as the first sister. Be a role model for the young ones instead of acting so immature. Despite her unwillingness, Xiao Shan didn't dare to go against her master's wish. She continued on with an unhappy expression. He Chen stomped on the ground after seeing what he perceived as an injustice. Wang saw everything and said, Chen Er, you are letting me down. Master, He Chen didn't expect these words to come from his master at all. You and your sister have great talents much better than mine. However, the two of you are too arrogant, thinking that you're better than others so you look down on them. I pampered you too much instead of doing a good job of grooming you. I have failed in my role as your master. Wang sighed and shook his head. Master, He Chen's complexion turned pale. Wang went on, you should know that the responsibility of taking care of the sect will fall on the two of you one day since I'm old now. Cultivation alone isn't enough to lead a sect, Wisdom, reading people, and magnanimity are necessary or the sect will fall in your hands. How will you be able to see the ancestors then? The two of you lose your cool too easily while being too obstinate with your beliefs. If you don't try harder to rid yourself of these flaws, how can I ever be at ease to hand the sect over to you? Chapter 1748, Beauty Undressing Shen Xiaoshan had warmed the bath with the perfect temperature. After preparing clothes for Li Qi, she said coldly, it's done, you can take your bath now. She was quite discontent. Even though she wasn't a princess from a great power or country, her background wasn't that weak as the first disciple of Sago Palm. This was relatively prestigious enough but now, she had to a servant to a mortal? If it wasn't for the fact that one couldn't disobey their master, she would have beaten the guy already, let alone serving him. 
Li Qi stood there and looked around at the bath filled with mist. He stretched out his arms and said, Disrobe me. 1. You, Xiaoshan's expression sank. She thought that she would only be preparing the bath for him, not something like this. You shouldn't push it. She was furious since she was completely inexperienced with the opposite sex. An innocent maiden should not have any contact with men, let alone take their clothes off. Li Qi coldly stared at her and spoke, hurry up. Xiao Shan quivered with rage, evident by her glare. Alas, Li Qi stood his ground and calmly met her gaze. In the end, she clenched her teeth and began the undressing process. Due to her inexperience, her fingers were trembling with clumsy movements. Looks like you got a lot to learn. Normally, I would hate such clumsiness but this will have to do for now, Li Qi leisurely commented. Shen Xiaoshan's expression became unsightly with rage spewing out of her eyes while having the urge of breaking him into pieces. Li Qi completely ignored her angry gaze. After a while, she eventually finished undressing him completely. The entire process was very embarrassing since she didn't dare to look straight at him and had to keep her head low. Her fingers became hot as she touched his toned body. She quickly turned around after finishing the task. Her face was red, overwhelmed with both anger and shame. This was all because of this bastard? Li Qi's calm demeanor contrasted her fury. It was a normal occurrence for him. Under normal circumstances, someone like Shen Xiaoshan wasn't qualified to wait on him. He entered the bath and immersed into the water before ordering, give me a massage. She almost vomited blood after thinking that she was spared from this torture, not expecting another unreasonable demand. Li, you're really pushing it now, she angrily shouted. Fool. Li Qi glanced at her and took his time responding, you think I'm trying to curry favor with your sect? It is the opposite. Your sect prosperity and decline are up to a single thought of yours. Reflect on the difference between you and your master. He is quite discerning with great ideas. Moreover, he's stronger than you right now but he is still very respectful towards me. If it wasn't for his attitude, I wouldn't want to take a single step into this sect. Come over. Her face kept on changing color. He was completely frank and even shattered her confidence. She felt her scalp tingling with rage but still walked closer and sat down next to him. Having never massaged anyone before, let alone a man, so understandably, it wasn't a good job. With a blush, she had trouble restraining her anger at having to perform what she considered a lowly task. Thus, she rubbed harder while fantasizing about crushing him to pieces. Alas, that would be going against her master's order. Of course, this pain was nothing to Li Qi. He glanced at her and said, Your master is a rare talent despite his mediocre constitution. Many Deo saints and Deo celestials have far inferior insight about how to deal with the world compared to him. For example, you and other cultivators, the only thing in your eyes is supreme merit laws and aptitude while taking zero consideration about customs and social interactions. Thus, it wouldn't surprise me at all if one day, someone massacres your entire clan because of something stupid you have done. Humph, are you saying that you're more exceptional than us? Shen Xiaoshan scowled. This was her first time really talking to him. What do you think? Li Qi calmly elaborated, do you think you're better than your master? Look at it from another perspective, will you do a better job as the sect master in the future? She became quiet. Her talents were indeed better but she might not do a better job than him as the sect master. Though the sect had no sign of rising up the ranks, it was peaceful under Ti Wang's command. Moreover, he had a great relationship with the neighboring powers. He dealt with intersect politics in such a skillful manner. She was confident about surpassing him in cultivation but becoming a better sect master? That was a different matter. You think your master is stupid? Or is he a sycophant that would lick the boots of any man? Li Qi continued. Of course not. My master isn't that kind of person. He is a visionary. She shouted and wouldn't allow anyone to insult her master. Right. Li Qi was in a rare mood to teach and continued on. If your master isn't stupid and kept on being respectful towards me, is there something wrong with him? If I have no value, would he act in this manner? If I am incapable, would I not care about cultivators? Do you think I am an ignorant fool that has no fear of death? Xiao Shan had no response because the guy was making sense. Her master was not stupid and he wouldn't conduct himself towards a mortal like this for no reason. In the beginning, she was already discontent due to her own prejudice and considered him an insignificant mortal. His attitude only further exacerbated the issue and rage blinded her perception. 
After thinking about it carefully, her master wouldn't let his first disciple waits on any random person. All right, don't just stand there. Focus. His voice disturbed her contemplation. She regained her wits as well as a better understanding of her master's intent and the situation. Nevertheless, she was still annoyed at his attitude but her mood did become better as she began her message. Why would she bother posturing towards this mortal when her own master was borderline subservient? She became more attentive and better with the task at hand. MMM Lee Ki enjoyed it and said, Not bad, able to change your attitude. Still a bit unhappy but at the very least, your decorum is better now. Being able to turn back from one's mistake is the greatest virtue. You always talk to people like this. An innocent maiden was taking care of him yet he was still criticizing her. How could she not become angry? Do you want to hear the truth? He smiled. Humph, it's not like you ever hold back, do you need my permission? She scowled unhappily. That's true. Li Qi nodded seriously and chuckled, I don't really pay attention to how I normally talk. However, one thing is certain, under normal circumstances, not to mention talking or waiting on me, you wouldn't be qualified to even see me. Chapter 1749, Bathing with the Beauty Shen Xiaoshan's mood had just gotten better but this didn't last long after hearing this. Such arrogant words would have enraged just about anyone. Not even qualified to see him? How outrageous was this statement? In fact, she naturally didn't know that in the Nine Worlds, so many ancestor-level characters and young emperor assailants had a hard time meeting Li Qi even if they wanted to. So many imperial lineages were willing to marry their goddess and princess to fiercest, the prime emperor. Unfortunately, their ladies didn't even have a chance to meet Li Qi, let alone taking the next step. Oh, then are you saying that you are a noble from some country or an illegitimate child of a big shot? She sarcastically mocked. I know you wouldn't believe me, but nobles and princes are nobodies. Li Qi calmly answered. Shen Xiaoshan couldn't say anything. She couldn't even become angry anymore. Other braggers would turn red a bit after boasting so hard. However, this mortal was so confident in his speech to her disbelief. He spoke in such a nonchalant and matter-of-fact manner. If this mortal was boasting, then he would be the best one she had ever met. But if he wasn't, that's why she had nothing to say and was completely confused during this short contact with Li Qi. She had no clue who this man was, he was unfathomable. The more people got to know him, the more they became moved by an unknown attraction, perhaps due to his charisma. It was as if he could engulf just about anyone, after this, they would be utterly convinced by him. It was quite a frightening aspect, causing her to shudder at this moment. Come in. He spoke as she was lost in contemplation. She was taken aback by the request. He was lying half submerged in the bath and she had never taken a bath with a man before. What kind of woman do you? She angrily shouted. You're overthinking it. Li Qi waved his hand and interrupted her, I'm not telling you to take a bath together with me, only to clean me well. Her anger didn't subside after hearing this. She still angrily stared at him with a touch of embarrassment. She couldn't get into the bath to serve a man. What now? Afraid that I'll take advantage of you? Li Qi assessed her and said flatly, You are quite pretty but there is a waiting list for that. There is a million women in line waiting to take advantage of me before you? You? One million before me. Most girls were a bit prideful of their beauty, especially someone as pretty as Shen Xiaoshan. Though she couldn't compare to the daughters from the great powers and imperial lineages, she was still the prettiest at Sago Palm. But now, when Li Qi said there was a million in line before her, it was truly humiliating and infuriating. She had the urge of beating the man ahead into a pig head. Who really knows? The thirteen continents are too vast. Li Qi said slowly. Blood almost left her mouth again. She glared at him and uttered coldly, Can you stop being so narcissistic? Li Qi answered, This is called confidence. Come, don't waste my bath time. She felt her soul leaving her body after being stared at by his dull yet authoritative eyes. There was a sensation of his eyes gazing into her soul. She lost control of her body but it was a pleasant feeling. His profound eyes encompassed three thousand worlds, capable of devouring all divine lights and gestating all existences. All beings would prostrate before them. Even though he was immortal at the moment, he was once the ruler of the nine worlds, the dark hand behind the curtains, and especially an immortal emperor. Someone at Xiaoshan's cultivation couldn't withstand his charm. Even eternal existences had submitted to him. Before she knew it, she had already stepped into the bath. 
Water wetted her clothes, revealing her enchanting and exquisite curves as she gently washed his body. After a long time, she regained her wits and became startled. What sorcery is this? She was understandably alarmed since she seemed to have lost control of her body and became a victim to his whim. It's no sorcery. Li Qi shook his head, this is called prestige. Have you ever seen a grand emperor? With your cultivation, you won't just be kneeling after seeing one. His prestige and authority could turn you into a follower for a lifetime. Hmph, but you're not a grand emperor. She scowled. Of course, she hasn't seen an emperor before but she had heard many legends relating to them and could imagine that scene. Rumor has it that wherever they went, people couldn't help but kneel, just like Li Qi's comment. Ah. She suddenly screamed due to shame because she was completely wet at this moment. She turned red and hot. This situation made it too awkward for her. Li Qi didn't bother glancing at her. He said flatly, don't worry, I won't be taking advantage of you. You. His calm demeanor only exacerbated the situation. It was as if this garden of spring was nothing before his eyes. Of course, he had seen too many beauties and supreme figures. He didn't want to take a look at someone like Shen Xiaoshan. She was only an inconspicuous tree in a garden with a hundred blossoming flowers, and he didn't care for these flowers either, let alone her. After confirming that he wasn't looking, she continued to wait on him. However, she didn't dare to look at his body at all. From start to finish, he simply lay there to enjoy her service. In the beginning, she was quite bashful but as time passed, she calmed down after seeing that Li Qi had no devious intention and action. Anger turned into annoyance after seeing his lack of reaction to a beauty like her. Though she wasn't a peerless beauty or anything, her features were impeccable and she was certainly confident in her figure. Others might not swoon over her instantly, but they weren't bad. But now, Li Qi didn't steal a single glance at her. This was indeed hurting her self-esteem. Perhaps he wasn't lying when he talked about her not fitting his standards. Hmph, do you always make pretty girls wait on you? She didn't know why she was unhappy. It was a good thing that he was playing nice. Depends on the girl. You're quite lucky to have this chance since not just anyone can do it. He replied. This statement was no longer as outrageous now that she got used to him. So you're saying that many beauties have waited on you? How many figures have you seen? She angrily stated. Chapter 1750, Straight for the Heart. Li Qi smiled at her comment and answered, It's not about how many, just one that can get into your heart is enough. Please, then what kind of beautiful women have you seen? Shen Xiaoshan asked with annoyance. Beauty alone can't reach the apex. Only a bag of skin and well-sculpted skeleton beneath, not enough to touch my heart. She took another look at him and became suspicious, you must be lying then. Humph, probably haven't seen any naked woman yet. He almost burst out in laughter after hearing this, do I really need to lie about this? Humph, who knows? Earlier, you were boasting non-stop. I don't quite believe you. Okay, fine, if you said you have seen countless beauties, then have you seen the prettiest in pure and her figure? She smiled, hoping to stump him. Who is the prettiest in pure? Li Qi leisurely asked. Ha, you don't even know who the prettiest in pure is yet you still brag about having met countless beauties? In my opinion, you have probably only seen common ladies or courtesans in the mortal world. She became even angrier for some reasons after thinking that he was comparing her to women in the mortal world. Li Qi only chuckled and didn't bother defending himself. Wait, you really don't know purest prettiest. Her eyes widened as she stared at him. Li Qi chuckled and said, I do not, do I need to know who she is? You're were clearly bragging now, not knowing about Imperial Princess Ji Lin. She snorted and said. Li Qi calmly responded, only the prettiest in pure not the 13 continents but then again, I don't care about the latter either. Here you go again. She retorted, do you know who she is? She's the princess of the Jilin clan, a noble lady with immeasurable stateliness. Rumor has it that she even has the bloodline of an immortal monarch. Imperial princess Jilin was very well known in pure due to her beauty and prestigious bloodline. Of course, Xiao Shan had never seen her before but she still believed that the princess was the prettiest in pure. Only the bloodline of an immortal monarch, not a real imperial princess. It only takes a sentence from me for her to become my bed warmer. Li Qi smiled freely. You're insane. She didn't mock him this time. On the contrary, she was scared out of her mind and immediately covered his mouth. If outsiders heard these words, it might bring about a sect-destroying disaster to Sago Palm. 
The pale girl shouted, You might be tired of living but I'm not, same with my sect. If you have a death wish, go die alone, don't take us down with you. She was, understandably, spooked out of her mind. Sago Palm was only a tiny sect. There were too many like them under Jilin's jurisdiction. They weren't even a grain of dust compared to the behemoth that is Jilin. Not to mention the princess, even an ordinary disciple from that clan is an untouchable existence to Sago Palm. Thus, Li Qi's rude comment towards the princess could be a source of disaster if the clan were to catch wind of it. Of course, Shen Xiaoshan was the only one reacting. Li Qi didn't care at all. This princess was only a normal cultivator in his eyes. He stared at her with amusement. After a while, she eventually regained her wits. You're taking advantage of me. Li Qi's leisure voice sounded by her ears. She was surprised to hear this and instantly found that the two of them were next to each other. To be more precise, she was lying on top of him. Both of them were submerged underwater. Her wet clothes painted her curves, towering peaks, the flat and grassy plain beneath. These scenes were indescribably beautiful. Worst of all, Li Qi was completely naked. She felt her body burning with a strange sensation coursing everywhere. Ah! She immediately jumped up and water splashed everywhere. Contrary to her shocked state, Li Qi acted as if nothing special was going on. What are you looking at? The embarrassed girl shouted before squatting back down into the water in order to hide her exposed body. She had never experienced this before and wanted nothing more than to crawl down a hole. Li Qi leisurely said, It's only the flesh, you saw me completely too. Such a response only made her matter. This guy benefited yet he was still posturing. All right, I'll stop embarrassing you. Li Qi smiled and shook his head. He closed his eyes and went back to enjoying the warm water. Meanwhile, she took a deep breath to restrain her bashfulness before warning him with a stern expression, I don't care how talented and knowledgeable you are. You can act all that at our sect too because we need you, but do not run your mouth like that, especially about the imperial princess. It doesn't matter how great you are, Jilin can crush you with a single finger. You can be arrogant here but before the Jilin clan, you can't even cause a single ripple. She was very serious this time since she didn't want him to be killed and especially for her clan to be destroyed. Looks like you know how to restrain your arrogance sometimes. Li Qi casually responded with his eyes still closed. You. She could see that he didn't truly take her words to heart. Another deep breath was required. She put on a rare attitude and spoke with a tinge of gentleness. It's fine that you are capable but our sect is too small to handle any storm. If you want to speak these domineering words in the future, I hope it won't be here. Li Qi finally opened his eyes and stared at her while being pleasantly surprised, that's a better attitude. Looks like you can be more like your master in the future. It was her turn to be quiet. The truth that she wasn't a fool. However, Li Qi was only a mortal so she naturally felt superior and arrogant before him. With more interactions, she found that he wasn't an ordinary mortal nor was he that simple. Before she knew it, her attitude and mindset started to change for the better when dealing with him. Now that I'm looking at you again, much sexier than before. He teased. Embarrassment and anger quickly returned despite her successful attempt at quelling them just now. She felt her body burning when he stared at her. It was a numbing and tingly sensation, similar to being slightly electrified. Her heart shuddered with an indescribable sense. She felt that it was getting harder to stand straight. Her red face could no longer bear to look straight at his eyes so she bashfully lowered her head. 